Really one of the biggest issues is building trust from search to checkout. And you only have milliseconds to establish trust and credibility on your website. Welcome to the e-commerce coffee break podcast. Today we talk about why online reputation management is a crucial aspect of building and maintaining a successful e-commerce business. We also share how to become the most trusted brand in your space. Joining me today on the show are Scott Brantley, founder and CEO, and DJ Sprague, chief marketing officer of shopperapproved.com. Now, a couple SEO secrets. So let's dive right into it. Hello and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce coffee break podcast. Today we want to find out why your online reputation can make or break your business. Now building trust, having an online reputation is so important for e-commerce and far more important or far more difficult to achieve than in a brick and mortar store because everything is digital. I want to dive into this topic quite deep today and with me on the show I have two guests. I have Scott Brantley and DJ Sprague. Both of them are working shopperapproved.com. They have founded them and they have a vast experience when it comes to building online reputation to building trust. So let's welcome them to the show. Hi, how are you today? Doing great. Thanks for having us on the show, Klaus. Yeah, yeah thanks, sure. Klaus. We're, we're excited to talk about reputation management for e-commerce. Absolutely. Maybe Scott, let's start with you. You have a background, a, a long time background in working and building reputation for your customers. How did you get into this topic and why do you think it's so important for e-commerce businesses? Yeah, so I've been doing stuff on the internet since 1997. Um, started my first e-commerce website back then. And, you know, things have progressed quite a long way since since then. Um But in, in 2008, I saw what Amazon was doing with ratings and reviews. And I thought to myself, why doesn't somebody else do that for other websites? And so that night I wrote down several pages worth of notes and ideas and things. And I went to my dad, who was my partner at the time, and some of our employees. And I pitched this rating and review idea to, to, to all of them. And they shut me down. Yeah, nobody wanted to do it. And so I ta I actually tabled the idea for a year. And then um, I brought it back up to my dad. And he let me kind of do a skunk works type project on the side. And it ultimately took over and became our biggest company. So um, we've been doing Shopper Proof since 2010. So we're one of the oldest online rating and review platforms in the world. And, you know, we focus specifically on e-commerce websites. And we try to, you know, level that playing field between Amazon and everybody else. So it's been fun. Mm -hmm. I think we, we all three of us are sort of dinosaurs or veteran when it comes to, to e-commerce. We have seen it from the day when it started. Now, Tell me, what's the biggest challenge uh, when it comes to e-commerce business? What do they face when it comes to building online trust, online reputation? DJ, maybe let's yeah, dive into um, that. Thank you. Really, one of the biggest issues is building trust from search to checkout. A lot of companies will collect reviews on what we call an island, but because they'll use a review collection platform that is not a Google and Bing review partner. So those reviews aren't syndicated to the search engines. They don't show up in organic and paid search. They don't show up in your uh, Google shopping. They don't show up on dedicated review certificates. They don't show up on your website uh, with the rich snippets and the schema markup. So when people are doing a search for your brand, your website name uh, or your products, and they don't see reviews in search, they're much less likely to click over to your website. And the other part of that is they don't properly display the social proof or ratings and reviews on the homepage above the fold. And you only have milliseconds to establish trust and credibility on your website when people hit your homepage or landing page. So if you're not showing trust signals right then and there in those few milliseconds where people are making a snap decision to stay engaged and move forward or bounce and go somewhere else, so those are some of the common mistakes people make when it comes to reputation management and properly collecting, syndicating, and displaying reviews and social proof in search and on all the pages of your website. Mm -hmm. 
Now, the first step, obviously, is to collecting reviews, testimonials, and all of that. And I think that's where it already starts to become difficult for a lot of merchants out there. How can businesses encourage customers to leave authentic and verified reviews? That's a great question. Um, most most people don't know that there's two different types of review platforms online. One of them is we call it an open review platform where anyone can go leave a review about anybody with mm -hmm. usually with very little verification. And then the other type is what we call a verified review platform. And that's typically where a customer has to actually buy something before they get before they get the opportunity to leave a review. And um, consumers don't really know the difference because in search results, both types of review platforms show up next to each other. And so it's really important that, um, that we educate consumers about the different types of reviews because essentially one type, the open review platform, it's very prone to manipulation, right? A lot of these review platform open review platforms become essentially complaint boards, right? Like ripoff report type things. Because what happens online when somebody gets a you know order something and they get that order, if they're if they've had a bad, you know, a bad experience with that product and they don't get resolution from the company, then where do they go? Right. They go somewhere online to complain. And usually those are these open review platforms. And so what you'll find is that good, honest companies, if they're not actively trying to, you know, take care of that, of their reputation on these open review platforms, their reputation will slowly go down because, you know, good companies still get bad bad customers or or even good customers might have a bad experience occasionally so what happens is as these customers go find a place to complain online a company a good company's star rating could go from a you know a 4.5 to a 4 to a 3.5 down even to like in the ones in the one star rating and a lot of these business owners are like scratching their head they're like what the heck? Like I'm working my butt off to run a good company and I have a 1.5 on trust pilot. Like what the heck's going on? They just don't understand. And so what we do at Chopper Approved, we're a verified review platform and we really try to, you know, educate the customer on the different types of reviews and how that they how they can become highly trusted online. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to reviews, the interweb is more and more moving into video. So in the past, you would ask via email, leave a review, a text email, but everything is going into video. Everything is going into user-generated content. How do you motivate um, people to leave a video review? And how can you sort of repurpose that into your marketing strategy? Yeah, great question. So in our survey response uh, email, we do have a request to leave a video review so they can leave a seller rating, which is for the website, also known as a merchant review. They can also leave a product review. And then we ask them to leave a video review. Now, the nice thing about video reviews is you can incentivize them. So as a Google review partner, which we are, which means our reviews get syndicated to Google and they show up in your organic and paid search results, as well as on your website and on our review certificate that represents the brand. Uh, we can also uh, collect video reviews and you can provide a discount or a coupon code or a bounce back coupon or whatever it is you want to do to leave that video review. Now, you can't do that with seller ratings because that's gaming the system and Google does not allow that. Uh, they don't like it for product reviews either, but there's no restraints on video reviews. So, you know, it'd be our recommendation to offer some kind of a bonus or gift or certificate or coupon uh, to leave that video review. And as you know, video is very, very popular and people love YouTube. YouTube is the second most popular search engine in the world. So it's a great place to optimize those uh, brand and product video reviews and also display on your website, share on your social media channels, et cetera. Mm -hmm. I want to touch on Google reviews. Obviously that, I don't know, Correct me if I'm wrong, probably the biggest review platform out there. Um, if you're searching, if you're on Google Maps, you see Google reviews all over the place. 
how do I need to maintain my my reviews there? What kinds of tools does Google offer me to to make sure that there is no spam in there, that um, I do it the right way? How does that work? Sure. Um, so Google, so you're talking about Google business, right? The Google business reviews. Mm -hmm. So that really, those really apply mostly to local type businesses or brick and mortar type businesses versus e-commerce, but you still can, you can still send your customers to a Google business page. If you're an e-commerce store, one of the ways that Google kind of takes care of some of the fraud there is you have to have a Google profile in order to leave a review on Google business. Mm -hmm. And that's not like foolproof, but it does make it a little more difficult, right? Because if somebody was to try to game the system at scale, they would have to create hundreds or thousands of fake Google business profiles, which would be really hard to do. Um, so that's, that's one way that you can you know, that Google kind of protects himself on that side. Um, on the e-commerce side, Google also is a syndicator. So or they are an aggregator, sorry. They aggregate reviews from their review partners like Shopper Approved, and they put them all together for e-commerce. So when you're doing a search in Google and you, you see like star ratings next to say like a paid ad, those those stars are aggregated from all the different sources that Google has partnered with online. And so you're actually seeing a conglomerate a lot of times from different places, um, like companies like us that Google trusts and is vetted and they take all of those reviews and put them together to create an overall aggregate for that company. Mm -hmm. And so there's, so there's, there's different ways that Google shows reviews online. So one is like Google business, like you mentioned. One is is this aggregation that Google does for e-commerce. And then the, the third way is Google product reviews, which they also aggregate. And a lot of times those show up in Google Shopping. So they show ratings and reviews show up in different places in search, depending on the type of review and what you're searching for online. Mm -hmm. Now, I think the biggest fear that businesses have is that they get negative reviews and they don't know how to handle them online. Obviously, in regards to customer service, that should be a no-brainer. But how do you deal with um, the negative reviews? How do you rank them? Do you only want to have five-star reviews or do you want to have some negative reviews? What's your best yeah. approach there? Well, as, as a Google review partner, you cannot delete or remove negative reviews. You cannot manipulate them. All reviews stay, number one. And that's a requirement of Google. And it makes sense because really what you're trying to do is show a real perspective on the brand. Now, every brand is going to get some negative or critical reviews. It's just the nature of business because there's no perfect business. So you certainly don't want to have a five-star average rating because most people don't believe that every company is perfect. So research says that you want to be somewhere in the you know 4.1, 4.2 to 4.7 range because once you start getting too high of an average score, especially if you have hundreds or thousands of reviews and they're all perfect, people don't believe you. They assume you're gaming the system. They assume you're manipulating or deleting those critical or negative reviews. So you've actually lost trust when you do that. Uh, number two, you want to respond to those reviews because a lot of people are looking at the critical or negative reviews to see how you deal with the customer problems or the product problems, the shipping problems, et cetera. They wanna make sure that you're not ignoring the customer. They wanna make sure that you're dealing with those issues and you're responsive. You're actually saying, Gee, Klaus, we're sorry that you had a less than perfect experience. Uh, you know, 98% of our clients have a wonderful experience, which is reflected in our 4.8 average star rating. But here's what we're going to do to make it right. Now, a couple of SEO secrets. If you have a negative review, you don't mention the brand name or the product name in that response. If you have a positive review, that's a great time to mention the brand name or product name, because that's going to help with your SEO, right? So a couple little little secrets there. But in general, you want to respond to at least 
60 to 70, if not 80 or 90% of your reviews, positive and negative. If they're negative, you respond to every one of them. If they're positive, because most of them are going to be, which is why you're in business. If you had mostly negative reviews, you wouldn't be in business anyway. Um, you don't need to respond to every single uh, positive review if you're getting thousands of reviews. If you're only getting a handful or a few hundred, yeah, absolutely. Go ahead and respond to all of those. Because again, it tells the shopper, the prospective customer, that you're a very responsive, caring, transparent, authentic brand. And that's really what people want. So they want to see the response, particularly to the negative experiences. When you turn a, a negative review into a, we call it a net positive review, those are actually like a hundred times more valuable than a five star because mm -hmm. you're showing your customer, like DJ said, that you care about them. And a lot of people, they'll go straight to one stars to see how you treat your customer before they consider right. buying from you. So, yeah. so those one stars, how like it's, it's very strategic and a lot of companies completely ignore their one stars to their own detriment, because if you do not respond to your one stars, it's like committing business suicide because people just, they'll look and they'll be like, oh, this company doesn't care about their customers because they don't reply to the customers that have a problem, yeah. right? But when you do and you do it strategically, you turn that one star into a net positive and that makes all the difference. The other thing is when people look at negative reviews, they just want to see how bad bad is. <laughs> so in other words, if, oh, it arrived two days late or the packaging was damaged or uh, it took them five minutes to answer the customer service request. Okay, no big deal. I can deal with that. But if they see the product never shipped over and over and over, or uh, products were damaged over and over and they never refunded or took the product back, those are big issues, right? So people want to do what we call risk mitigation. They want to see how bad it could be so they can mitigate their risk. But if it's just little annoyances and somebody left a one-star review because they were annoyed, Okay, get over it. That's not a bad review. No, absolutely. I think this is so important that you just mentioned that. And I think that's a, a masterclass that you go, just gave there on how to handle your reviews, how to handle your complaints, and how it be just being transparent to the public on how you handle problems when they come up. So for our listeners, listen to this part more than once uh, and put it into your business. It's so important. Now, when it comes to metrics, um, obviously you have the number of reviews coming in. Are there any other kind of metrics that businesses should track related to online reviews? and their reputation so there's your overall star rating which is important that dj mentioned which the sweet spot is between 4.1 and 4.7 that's there's a lot of data on that so you want your reviews to live within that range if at all possible but you also want to be authentic right you don't want to manipulate the system of course um, but then there's also recency um, google actually only displays reviews for their seller ratings um, within a certain amount of time. And, and with after that time expires, those reviews drop off. And the reason they do that is because they know that consumers want the most recent reviews possible. Uh, so recency is a big one. And review volume. People volume. want to see was, a lot of I'm like, I know there's another one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they want to see that, that you have a you know, a good chunk of reviews because that shows that you've been around for a while. You know, there's a large amount of social proof. So, you know, you can be trusted. You know, if you only have like five or 10 reviews, I mean, that's better than none, right? But if you have, if your competitor has, you know, five or 10 and you have a hundred, the mm. customers are going to go to you. So there are different metrics that, that matter. And, but those are probably the three highest, the, the overall star rating, the, having recent reviews, a continuous stream of recent reviews, and then the overall total number of reviews. And research says that a lot of people will discount reviews that are older than two weeks. So the, the value decreases over time. And back to what Scott was saying about uh, the recency for seller ratings is a rolling 12 month average. So you know, they're looking at, at a rolling 12 months. So you've got to keep those reviews coming in for seller ratings. Because if you, if you don't, you say, oh, I'm good. Let's shut off the review collection. Well, your seller ratings disappear and you Google ads uh, and the consumer loses confidence 
It's because if they start to see your reviews aging, oh, this the last review was left three months ago. And then on this product, the last product review was left six months ago. It doesn't look like you're a very viable uh, brand. It doesn't look like people are buying your product consistently, constantly, and recently. Because as Scott said, that social proof in the recency and the volume is a subconscious metric that consumers use to say, oh, this is a popular, currently popular brand, and they're collecting reviews regularly, daily. And that's very important because nobody wants to deal with a brand that's not popular. And if they don't see current fresh reviews, you don't look popular. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are just starting your business, you're new in the market or you're opening a new product line with a separate store and you don't have reviews, what are your recommendations to get reviews as quick as possible? And are there any strategies if you literally don't have any? How do you still build up trust and reputation with your to be customers? Well, there's one thing you can do, and that is uh, obviously um, you can ask people uh, to leave reviews on your website. Um, but you also have a, a tool where you can send multiple requests to your customers uh, through email to leave a review. So if they don't leave a review the first time, you can ask them again and then again a week later. Uh, and that helps build up the volume of reviews. And then, of course, the video reviews where you can incentivize. Uh, that's another way to build up a volume of reviews. And video reviews are very engaging, as you know. So a couple of really good video reviews can be golden. If you've got uh, you know, two, three, four video reviews that really tell a good story from both the uh, seller rating or merchant side and the website experience, as well as the product side, then you've got some, some really weighty social proof. And, uh, and that can get you, you know, very far. Yeah. And I would add to that, Klaus. Um, so the way we do it at Shopper Approved is we combine all three types of review collection into one survey. And what that allows us to do is collect as much um, feedback as we possibly can from the customer at one time. Because what, what typically happens is um, when we... When we send out a survey, we'll get a lot of people that that complete the seller rating, but not as many people complete the product review because it takes more time, right? And then on the the, the least amount collect a video review because people don't necessarily love being in front of the camera, right? And so what you need to do strategically, as soon as you start a business, you should start collecting reviews. And what will happen over time is you'll start collect collecting more seller ratings, but that's good because then you can leverage that. You can leverage those in certain ways online. And then over time, you'll collect more product reviews. Those will come in a little bit slower, but you, so you got to start right as soon as you possibly can, because that's going to take longer. And then like DJ was saying, you leverage video reviews and you incentivize those because they have a lot of power and influence if and you don't you don't need very many of them to actually make a difference and so it's kind of like this three tiered approach mm -hmm. but the way we do it at job approved is it's all in one so it makes it easier for the for the business to collect mm -hmm. that makes perfect sense now on that note i want to ask about how do you deal with People are very concerned about their privacy. So um, obviously you need to tell them in some form or way that you might use the review for your marketing, for your user-generated content. Um, how do you deal with this kind of privacy regulations that are out there? Sure. So at, um, as part of every survey that we collect, there's a little opt-in at the end that basically gives them links to our privacy policy in terms of service and they can read through that and see see how we use the information, um, and they check a box so that they, you know, agree to the terms. So and speaking of privacy, uh, privacy on the the client side or the website side, uh, um, there's one unique feature of the video reviews, and that is that the website owner can delete any video review that is you know scathing or um, you know, argumentative or negative that they just, I don't want that on YouTube. They have the power to do that because the video reviews are not part of the uh, Google seller or product ratings system. So that gives the owner 
protection and privacy if somebody's being you know really rude or using foul language or making inaccurate statements uh things of that nature mm -hmm. let's talk a, lot, a little bit more about chopperapproved.com um how does the onboarding work um what kind of homework does a merchant need to do to before they can get started just walk me through the process one of the things that we take pride in is our is our customer support and our onboarding and so what the way that someone typically comes on to shopper approved is they'll first off they'll have an onboarding call and with one of our onboarding specialists and they'll walk them through the whole process just to make sure that they understand exactly how everything works and then from that point then they go to our integration team and we have a we have a whole team that will integrate everything for them and which is really nice because a lot of a lot of businesses don't necessarily have that ability in house. And then the third thing, the third step is we send them to our styling team, which then works with them to make sure that everything matches the look and feel on their website. So it's very white glove, hands on approach the whole way. We hold the customer's hand and walk them through it. And if you look online, you'll see we 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 walk the talk. So we're the number one highest rated review platform in the world. And one of the reasons is because our customer support and our onboarding are so amazing. They just take care of the customer from the very beginning. Yeah. You walk them through all the best practices and all the best places to place the review widgets, the seals, um, how to collect, how to do the settings on the control panel to maximize the review collection volume. They walk them through how to respond to reviews. So it, it's a white glove process. And uh, if they ever have a question, they can always reach out uh, by phone or email or chat and uh, talk with our experts to resolve any question or, or issue they have. Mm -hmm. On that note, who is your perfect customer? Are there specific verticals or industries that you work more with than others? That's e-commerce uh, or 100% e-commerce or anybody that has some kind of a uh, checkout process. Uh, we do have some clients that work uh, in non-traditional e-commerce. For example, they might have uh, downloads or something of that nature. Um, but typically it's the three to $50 million uh, annual sale e-commerce website uh, we have clients all over the world. We've dealt with over 20,000 e-commerce websites. We've collected over 200 million reviews. Um, so, you know, we've been there, done that. Uh, we've solved every problem. We integrate with every shopping cart. Uh, Shopify, obviously, is huge. Big commerce, WooCommerce, Magento, uh, custom carts. So there's really nothing we can't integrate with or nothing we haven't integrated with. We've done it all. Um, uh, hopefully that answers your question, the ideal customer. Absolutely, it does. I mean, these numbers speak for themselves. Tell me a little bit more about your pricing structure. How does that work? It depends on what the customer needs. I mean, we've been around a long time, and so we've built a lot of really cool proprietary tools and strategies that go with our tools. So one of the things that really sets Shopper Approved apart is it's it's not cookie cutter everybody doesn't get the exact same thing because what we found is that certain companies might need different tools or you or or need to leverage our tools in different ways and so what we've done is we've created um, a pricing grid that we price all of our clients on so everybody gets treated equally and then depending on what their needs are we create a a, a quote for them and with some different pricing options as far as like if they want a contract, if they you know want to do a longer contract, like we'll offer discounts and things so that, and then they can decide if they want to pay annually to get an even further discount or monthly or quarterly. So we really try to work with them, figure out how you know how we can fit within their budget to make have it make sense. Um, but it's kind of like a a custom process where we work with you to dis to determine what your real needs are and then we come up with strategy and tools to help you maximize that i understand that you also have a book which is called reputation king dj maybe tell me a little bit more about that absolutely 
Uh, we just published Reputation King. Uh, it's 228 pages, 91 color illustrations, graphs, charts, examples, before and afters, case studies, 49 expert citations. Uh, we have 35 reviews from experts in e-commerce, uh, digital marketing, uh, advertising, uh, social media, behavioral design, uh, some, some really impressive uh, authors and experts that have reviewed our book. Uh, it's really a complete uh, you know, walkthrough of everything when it comes to collecting, syndicating, responding to, understanding the industry, the do's and don'ts, the pros and cons, the ins and outs, uh, best examples, case studies, uh, and how everything works from collecting seller ratings, displaying and syndicating seller ratings, product reviews, video reviews, Q&A, website security, and the interplay between ratings and reviews and Q&A and SEO and CRO or conversion rate optimization. Because we really live in this, this in-between sweet spot between driving more traffic organically and paid. Because when you have your seller ratings and your Google ads, you get a higher click-through rate. 15 to 17% is what Google says. We have clients saying that they've increased their, their click-through rate by up to 35%. So you're getting more traffic and that traffic is coming to you with a more positive trust perspective because of the reviews in the search results, both product and seller ratings, organic and paid. And then we, of course, we walk through how to respond to reviews and the difference between an open review platform and a verified review platform and how to manage your reputation online, how to amplify your reviews across the web, in your collateral, on your website, in your emails, your social media. So it's really a complete uh, handbook on everything reviews and reputation management, specifically for the e-commerce industry and the e-commerce executive. Because we believe that if the e-commerce executive doesn't really understand the review industry and how to manage and amplify their online reputation, then it doesn't get down to the rest of the team. And it becomes just a commodity. And it's like, oh, we're collecting reviews. Well, but you are you really? Because they're not being syndicated to Google. They're not showing up in search. They're not being properly displayed on your website. So although you think you're doing the review thing, you're really not. And so mm -hmm. we really try to expose what it is and what it isn't. Mm -hmm. I think just the volume of the book shows how important it is and how many different parts of business play into building the reputation. And you just mentioned the CRO is SEO. So it's just much, much more than asking for a review through a simple email. Now, before we come to the end of the coffee break today, is there anything that you want to share with our listeners that we haven't covered yet? We want to give everyone that's listening a gift from from you, Klaus, <laughs> so and from us. So what we um, if you go on Amazon, you can get the the digital version of Reputation King for twenty dollars. But um, for those listening to this podcast today, we're actually going to give everyone a copy for free. So if they go to reputationking.com slash coffee break, they can actually get a free digital copy of the book. And audio copy. Okay, excellent. I th thank you in my name and in the name of the listeners, because I will go ahead and get a copy because I'm very curious on all the content that is in there and to build up a reputation for e-commerce seller is so important. So I think everyone listening to the show today just should go ahead. I will put the link in the show notes so that you will be easy to find. Where else can people reach out to you? Shopperproof.com. So they can go right to shopperproof.com and uh, they can schedule a demonstration. We'll walk them through everything we talk about in the book. They can go to reputationking.com. They can also order uh, the physical book. It is a real book. Um, and again, it's, it's 228 pages. It's jam packed full of great resources and information. Uh, we sell the book on the website. We only deliver in the U S uh, but it's 1997 on the website delivered anywhere in the U S uh, for that price, it includes the shipping and the book. Um, so that's another place uh, you can reach out and learn more. But we have a wealth of information on shopperapproved.com. We have a very extensive blog. And uh, of course, there you can schedule time with one of our experts. 
Perfect. Cool. I will put all the links in the show notes. As said, you will be just one click away. Scott, DJ, thanks so much for your time today. I think that was a masterclass in building reputation as an e-commerce seller out there. And I'm sure a lot of our listeners will have to listen more than once to get all the golden nuggets out of it. Thanks so much for your time today. Thanks, Klaus. Thanks, Klaus. We appreciate it. Hey, Klaus here. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. Before we wrap things up, I've got a couple of important points to share. Firstly, if you have enjoyed today's episode and want to support the show, here's a simple way to do it. Help me out with that algorithm magic by liking, commenting, and subscribing on your favorite podcast app. And if you're feeling extra generous, leaving a rating would be great. Your support helps me bringing more impactful guests on the show, and it makes it easier for others to discover the podcast. Secondly, I want to talk about to all your business owners out there. Here's a question. Are you tired of juggling everything in your business while struggling with your marketing tasks? Fed up with hit and miss experiences of hiring freelancers or agencies that don't quite get your vision? But perhaps you're not ready to commit to a full-time in-house marketer just yet. Well, I've got a solution for you. Introducing our fractional marketing team. My team and I provide top-notch experienced marketing professionals to become an extension of your business. Not only will they save you up to 50% on cost compared to traditional hires, but they also take care of all this time-consuming, repetitive and complex marketing tasks that have been holding you back. And this way, you can concentrate on what truly matters, the core of your business. To learn more about how we can help you to scale up your online sales with a fractional team member, head over to our website, smart-ecommerce-marketing.com, or reach out to me directly and I'll get you the details. You will find the links in the show notes. Thanks for being a part of our podcast community and remember your support means the world to me. Until next time, see you there.